Coupons and discounts can be a great way to drum up interest in your store and to encourage people to visit your store and perhaps make a purchase that they would not otherwise have made. And for existing customers, coupons give you a reason to reach out via email and social media to bring them back and make them repeat customers. We can create coupons under the Promotions menu and the Discount Coupons tab. Now, when you go to this page, you may see a few sample coupons and that's fine. But we're gonna take a look at creating a coupon from scratch. As you can probably guess, you'll start by clicking the New Coupon button. For our example, let's say we want to create a coupon for a Valentine's Day discount. So first, we're just gonna name this so we know what it is, especially on the back end. We'll just write Valentine's Day discount. And now the code here is what the customer will type in to activate the coupon's discount. We start off with some random text here. We could write our own code to make it easy to remember, maybe Valentine's 2017. And if we do write something here and then decide that we want random code after all, we have this generate coupon code button and we can just click that and get some random characters again but I'm gonna go with Valentine's 2017. Again, something very easy for the customers to remember. Then we have a couple options over here pertaining to the discount itself. We can have simply a basic discount from the total, or we can just make this coupon be simply for free shipping, or we can do both. Take away the shipping costs and give them a discount from the total. Let's stick with discount. Then from there, we have another option. This can be a flat dollar amount discount or a percentage discount. Let's do a $10 off discount. We can set this valid from today or we can click on today and choose a date and say until deactivated. In other words, until we have manually gone back in the system and deactivated this discount or we can set it a date to automatically deactivate. Now, at the date that I'm doing this, it's past Valentine's Day already, but let's just say, maybe for argument's sake, just for example, that Valentine's Day this year is March 31st. Who knows what went wrong? The world forgot Valentine's Day, so they changed it to a little later. So we're gonna have this expire the day after March 31st, April 1st. So it'll be valid from today, as soon as we're finished creating the coupon, until April 1st, and then this coupon code will not work anymore. And currently it says it applies with no limits. If we click this no limits button, we can set a few limits. In other words, we can set this for all orders, which is the default, or only if the subtotal is over a certain amount. Now it's important to set a limit, particularly when you're doing a flat dollar discount like we are, because you don't want someone to place a $10 order and use a $10 discount and you get absolutely nothing. In most cases, maybe you do want that to be okay. And in that case, you'll just keep it as all orders. But in a lot of cases, it might not make financial sense for you to give someone an order entirely free. So let's say that if the subtotal is over $40, then we're gonna give them a $10 discount. We also have number of uses over here. We have unlimited. In other words, anybody can type in this code anytime. We have once per customer, which means any given customer can use this, but they can only use it one time. We're gonna select this for our situation because we're gonna assume that we don't want a customer to be able to place 20 different orders and use this discount every single time. Maybe we don't care about that, especially since we've set a limit over here. And if we don't care, obviously, we'll just set this to unlimited, but let's make this be once per customer. And then finally, we can make this just a single one-time in the world use coupon. This would mean that only one person ever can use this. And once one person has used that, no one else can ever use that again. That could be an interesting way to do like giveaways or special event coupons and things like that. If you're running maybe a contest or something. This is also commonly used to create gift certificates. We can choose whether this will go to all customers or whether only repeat customers can use this coupon. We'll stick with all. And then you can also limit this coupon by product or category. If we click limit by category, 
let's say that we only want this to apply to desserts for whatever reason. Maybe because desserts are more of a Valentine's Day thing and we don't want anybody to just use this on anything. Maybe you don't care, in which case you would just leave everything unchecked. But in our case, let's just zero in on desserts and click OK. And notice it says now it's applied to one category only. Once we have our settings, we'll click apply and finally save. And that's all there is to it. Now when our customers are checking out, if they use this coupon code before the time that this coupon expires, then they'll get $10 off their order if, of course, their order falls within the limits that we've set. Let's take a look at discounts. Of course, these are discount coupons that we've been looking at, but we also have a tab over here for just general discounts. Discounts are different from discount coupons in that while the coupons require the customer to input a coupon code on checkout, discounts apply automatically to all customers as long as they belong to the group that you've set the discount for. Now, we can do it simply based on subtotal, and it doesn't matter in that case what group the customer is in. So let's take a look at these one at a time. Let's say we want to add a discount for orders that are maybe $60 and more, and we want customers who order $60 worth of stuff to get maybe 5% off of their order. This is another type of incentive from the coupon, whereas coupons are meant to bring customers in, the discounts are meant to encourage customers to spend a little more. So we'll send this to percentage, and this will be 5% discount on any order $60 or more. So if we save this right now, which we will, anybody who makes any order with a subtotal of $60 and up, we'll get a 5% discount. And then you can also add additional discounts. Maybe if they spend $100, we're willing to give them an 8% discount, and so on and so forth. Now we can also make discounts based solely on customer groups. Here are a couple customer groups that we created earlier in the tutorial, and we can go back and manage these by clicking on this link, but we already have the VIP customer group, and the distributors customer group, and they automatically get a 10% discount and a 30% discount respectively off any order they make regardless of how much they spend. We can add another discount here. If we had another group, then we could do another discount. We do have general, which means there's no customer group, and we can apply a discount to anybody but it doesn't usually make sense to have a site-wide discount on everything for every single customer. Otherwise, your prices would simply be different. But the option is there if you ever want to do that. We'll delete that. And then finally down here, we can create a discount based on customer groups and subtotal. So this is a combination of the two things up here. Let's take a look. We'll click Add Discount Table. And first, up here, we're going to choose what group this applies to. Let's say this is for our distributors. And distributors, if we look up here, they already get a 30% discount on everything. But let's say that if a distributor spends $1,000, we're going to give them an even steeper discount. We'll give them a 35% discount if they spend $1,000 or more. And then if we want to add another table, maybe for our VIP group, we're going to click Add Discount Table up here. We're not going to click Add Discount here because that's simply going to add another discount level for distributors. But if we click this again, then we can choose a different group, VIP, and say that if a VIP customer, which isn't as large as a distributor, we're going to say, spends maybe $200 or more, then instead of a 10% discount, we'll give them a 20% discount. Once you've put in all these settings, of course, make sure you click Save. And just to recap, the difference here between what we were doing earlier is these discounts will apply automatically to the customer based on their group, their subtotal, or whatever the situation is. Whereas with the discount coupons, it's a code that the customer has to type in upon checkout in order for that discount to apply. So these are the ways you can provide additional incentives for customers to make purchases and to spend more when they might otherwise not have done so.